Terry? I think we well, got some email, don't we? We do. This is Monday, and we've got some Money Monday questions for mm -hmm. you. This is from Lynn, who says, I recently inherited $100,000 in the form of an annuity. Are annuities protected by the FDIC, and can annuities be moved? If so, do you think there's a safer vehicle to put this money into, considering recent financial crisis? Um, Lynn, uh, annuities are not protected by, by the FDIC, but I would encourage you not to change it. Um, annuities uh, in years gone by were always considered lesser investments. Um, they were, were specifically designed uh, as vehicles by insurance companies. And uh, the deal was they could pretty much guarantee that they were going to get a greater rate, rate of return than they were going to pay out to the beneficiary. Uh, but they were chosen uh, in order to protect beneficiaries who didn't have financial expertise and it was really a specific vehicle for investments for minors, that if something were to happen to parent, the children would be able to have a, a regular steady income. But in these financial times, uh, that kind of steady income is wonderful. Uh, now, there's some tax implications to it. Uh, you, you may want to see an accountant to sort of iron out all that out. But uh, the current wisdom in the current economic crisis is annuities are actually a, a pretty good deal if you have one. Uh, I'm not saying get in one, but I'm, I'm definitely saying don't get out of it if you've got it. Okay, this is from Sheila who says, I recently left my job to be able to spend time at home caring for our children. My husband is getting really anxious and stressed that we may not be able to pay our bills. <laughs> I'm stressing too. I thought God was leading me to do this, but how can I be sure when it seems to be failing already? Is it worth living bare bones so I can stay with the children? Um, Sheila, I always think it's worthwhile to stay with your kids. Uh, I think that's a good thing if you can if you can do it. Now the issue, you know, God was leading you and now you're into a time of stress and anxiety. One of the things about stress and anxiety is they're infectious. And so if uh, one spouse has it, the other one's likely to get it. Um, and what you need is the peace of God to come back in, in the, into that relationship, into your marriage, to give you peace that he is going to provide so that you can be there for your children in their formative years. It's, I think it's very important. I think, I think children need to have parents around them. And if you can possibly swing it, do. I know in my own life, uh, I felt God was leading me into the Philippines, that he was telling me to quit my job as a lawyer and, and go be a missionary. And uh, in the natural, it just seemed like insane. And uh, it seemed like it was the craziest thing ever. And then when I got to the Philippines, he kept assuring me that the support for the initiatives I was going to do was going to come from the Philippines. It was going to come from Asia. It wasn't going to come from the United States. And I started talking about that, and everybody thought I was absolutely insane. Um, and you talk about stress levels. Um, I got to a stress level because uh, God had to strip off of me concepts of how he provides and that it's not providing in the usual way. When, when God supplies, it's incredible. And he literally took me to a point of accumulation of monthly payables dead. And when I finally exhausted all the resources that I knew how as a lawyer and finally came to the end, I literally prayed, Lord, this is it. There's nothing more. I'm dependent on you. And that was exactly what he wanted to hear. But within 24 hours of that prayer, that thing completely turned around. So when you get to the end of yourself, that's wonderful because in your weakness, God's strength is made perfect. That's this is Brandon. We've got time for one more. I really enjoy business seminars. One I attended recently discussed how all humans are motivated by the avoidance of pain or the hope of pleasure. <laughs> this seems to make sense. Which do you believe is the greater motivator of human beings, avoiding punishment or receiving a reward? And does this fit with Christian faith? Uh, Brandon, uh, yeah, avoidance of pain. Most people avoid pain, uh, and if you you give pleasure to them, they'll they'll, they'll come back for more. Uh, but this is a, a real superficial understanding because if this were entirely true, we would never have children. Um, so what about that? What about that transaction uh, of a longer-term fulfillment? I think the greatest motivator of human beings is love. And when you come to that understanding of unconditional love, that you're willing to pour into your children again and again and again, 
uh, when you're willing to give to others, when you're willing to love your neighbor as yourself, you will find incredible satisfaction, incredible satisfaction. And none of this is intuitive. It is all counterintuitive. Uh, and so much of what God's kingdom is, is counterintuitive. The world wants you to think, well, everybody's in it for, for pleasure. Everybody's in it for their own gain. Uh, wrong, wrong. Uh, there are things that transcend that. And when we enter into that, we enter into a true understanding of God. Occasionally I've prayed to him and said, Lord, what's in it for you? <laughs> Why did you make me? Uh, you knew what I was going to do. You knew I was going to rebel. You knew I was going to turn away. You knew. Yeah. When you, when you get an answer to that question, when you understand how much he loves you and loves you unconditionally, that he delights in you and he's willing to pour at whatever sacrifice, whatever cost. When Jesus told me, Gordon, if you were the only one to believe, I still would have come for you. All my questions seemed really meaningless in the face of that love. When you understand that, you understand a great deal. It's powerful. Mm -hmm. Thank you for your questions on this Monday.